Hello. Good to see you once again. And thank you for joining us in our Sunday school this Sunday again. I hope you've been doing well and I hope you're fine. Well, thank God that we're all doing well. My name is Auntie Tenny, as usual, and I'll be taking us on another lesson today. Looking at the character as we talk about ignobility. But before we go on, let us pray. Put your hands together and let us pray. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to another session of a Sunday school in your presence. We thank you for keeping us from last week and bringing us to another time. Lord, we glorify your name. As we go into your word, oh Father, we pray that you open our mind, open our ears, that we may learn from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. All right, children. Before we go on, I want you to join me in the song. So just listen and enjoy the song. Sing along and have fun. I'll be back. Hey guys you are welcome back and i'm sure you enjoyed the song i'm sure you danced along with the song great all right so we are coming back to our lessons you know we've been talking about nobleness for some time now we've been talking about nobleness and we had you know said nobleness is a character of good behavior good standards without any evil but today we're going to look at a character that has to do with ignobility. Ignobility is actually the opposite of nobility. And that means ignobility has to do with selfishness, has to be with unkindness, has to be with uncompassionate, you know, disrespectful, dishonorable, all those bad characters. Those are the ones that you will find in the ignoble family. And we're going to look at the character today and see how it is not to be ignoble. So come along with me. So in today's lesson, we see a man who was ignoble and the consequences. So before I tell you the story about this man, I want you to get a Bible and your pen and your daughter because you need to scribble down some things you need to scribble down some things so that you can go back afterwards and look at them, okay? So, children, ignobility, as I said, has to do with selfishness, unkindness, has to be do with bad characters. And I want to believe that none of us would want to be ignoble. I'm sure, yes, nobody wants to be ignoble. With the help of God, we will not be ignoble. Our topic for today is Nabal. What did I say? Nabal. N-A-B-A-L. That is the topic for today. And that is our main character for today. And our main thrust will be be noble in your thoughts and deeds. Be noble in your thoughts and deeds. Our text will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 25 verses 2 to 13. First Samuel chapter 25 verses 2 to 13. I hope you've gotten them down. Okay, it's a little bit uh, no, long passage, but I will just summarize the story for you. So come along with me, just listen as I tell you the story. In this passage, there are three main characters that I want us to look at. We have David, we have Nabal, and we have Abigail. 
Nebal is a rich man. He had a lot of cattle, a lot of sheep, a lot of gold. He was a rich man. And he had a wife called Abigail. Abigail was a very wise and compassionate woman. But Nebal, whoa, he was very harsh. He was very unkind. He was very arrogant. He was very rude. Oh dear. Such an ignoble person. It happened that David and his men were camped somewhere and Nabal's men had their cattle and sheep somewhere. And Nabal, Nabal's men were looking after their, their, their stock while David and his men were just around their corner there. While the while when they were in their in, in at the field watching over their, their, their stock, David and his men looked after this man. They did not let anything get missing from the livestock. They were shielding them, they were protecting them. They made sure that they were in good hands. And so David's men helped them to secure their livestock on the field. And so it now came to a time of celebration, a time for sheep shearing. So David called 10 of his men and sent them to Nabal, telling him that, can you please kindly give us some provisions from your own? David actually sent them with a very, you know, polite accent. He only asked for some provision for his men. So this man went ahead to Nabal's home and got there and told him that Nabal, our boss, Uncle David, sent us to you. And he asked us to ask you politely if you can please give us some of your provisions. But Nabal, you know, remember I told you that Nabal was very arrogant and rude. He was angry and said, why? Why should I give you my provision? Who are you? Who is David? How can you send you to me to give him provisions for what? He was very, very arrogant and rude to them. So the man went back to David and told David what Nabal said. That Nabal was not ready to give them any provision. Whoa! David was angry. He was very angry. And he quickly told his men to get their sword and let them go face Nabal's household. He swore that Nabal will see his red eyes, even with his entire household. That is to show you that being ignoble can bring some anger, can bring some consequences. That is the story for today. I hope you enjoyed the story. Okay, now let's now get down our points, our learning points on our papers or on our jotters. Come along with me. So the first learning point we're going to learn is that we should generously use our wealth to bless others and not to be stingy. If you remember, I told you that Neva was a very rich man. He was wealthy. He had a lot that he could share. But because he was stingy, he was selfish, he was unkind, he refused to share with David's men. Children, it is good to share. It is very good to share. Sometimes your friends don't have you know, a pen to write and you have to share. Sometimes you have people that are hungry and you have a lot. You have Capri Sun, you have biscuit, you have chocolate, you have sweets, you have wafers, you have all sorts of things in your lunch bag. You can always share. It is good to share. We should learn to share. Another lesson is that we should learn and emulate good characters of people around us and let our positive character affect others. I told you before that Nabal's wife, Abigail, was a very nice person. She was a very, very wise and compassionate woman. Nabal must have been living with this woman for a while. 
but he refused to learn the good aspect of the wife. When we live with people, when we are with other people, always learn to, you know, emulate their good characters, their positive characters. If you have friends that are trustworthy, learn from them. If you have friends that are compassionate, learn from them. If you have parents that are very kind, learn from them. Always learn the positive characters of people. It will always help us. Another lesson point is that we should appreciate and remember those that have helped and blessed us in the past. David and his men had blessed Nabal's men when they were on the field. They had helped them to watch over their livestock. Even though it does not automatically mean that I should repay you for doing me good. But it is important that we'll appreciate people when they help us. A simple thank you goes a long way. We should be careful how we respond to people. Never be rude, mean, or nasty, even to our peers. Nebel was very nasty. He was very rude. Because when David's men went to him to ask for provisions politely, they didn't go there by force. They didn't go there to, you know, to harass him. They went to ask, begging him. But he was, he responded very rudely to them. That is ignoble. That is not good. It is not right for a child of God. Don't be rude to people. Don't be mean to people. Respond to people politely, nicely, even to your peers, not just only your elder ones, but to your age mates, your friends, your colleagues. Be nice to them. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. We should also learn to accept and manage rejection whenever we are refused or denied of something. I don't see why David had to be upset because Nebel refused him. Fine, Nabal was rude. But at the same time, if Nabal had refused David, that doesn't warrant him going over to him to fight him. As children of God, we should learn how to manage rejection, manage denial. Most times we ask for things from our parents and they say no. That doesn't mean we should get angry or we should quarrel with them. Remember, Sometimes when we ask God for something, he says no, because he knows that they might not be good for us. And so children of God should be able to manage their anger, should be able to manage when you have been denied or you have been rejected, so that it will not lead into hatred or lead into anger or lead into revenge. We should never allow such things to breathe inside of us. When we are being denied of something, accept it and sit back and check whether that thing was not supposed to be for you or whether it will not benefit you, whether it's not going to bring good things to you. So every child of God must be able to manage rejection or denial of anything always do good as unto the Lord without expecting any reward from anyone. David had done his good to Nabal's people. He shouldn't expect Nabal to repay him for the good. And so, as children of God, when we're doing good, we're doing it unto the Lord, not expecting any reward from anybody. Because the Lord that you're doing it to never owes you. He will surely repay at the appropriate time. Every ignoble act has consequences. Every ignoble act has consequences, which sometimes can be disastrous. And so we have to be noble. If Nebal had responded in, an, in a noble manner, I'm very sure David would not have raised the war against him. It could have turned so disastrous if not for his wife, Abigail, that came to the rescue. 
So, as children of God, we should be noble. Do not be ignoble. Do not, you know, let all those negative actions, negative acts, your negative characters, you know, breathe inside of you because you are a special breed of God. Ignobility has their consequences that can lead to a destruction and that of others because it might affect other people. It might reflect on other people. So as children of God, we are expected to be noble in our character. I hope we got all the points down. Okay, so let us now go into the memory verse. Our memory verse for today is taken from James chapter 4, verse 17. Can you repeat that, please? James chapter 4, verse 17. And it says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is a sin. Memory verse James chapter 4, verse 17. I'm going to repeat that for us. Memory verse, James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James chapter 4, verse 17. To be a, a, to be a noble child of God, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. To not be an ignoble child of God, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Both ways, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. And so if you know that you want to be a noble child, you want to say bye-bye to every ignobility in your life, come to Jesus. He will help you. He will surely help you. If you hold on to him and trust him to remove every ignobility, a, a, a character in your life, it will surely do it. But you need to come closer to me. And if you desire that this today, you desire to have Christ in your life today, just bow your heads and just ask him to come to your aid, to come to help you, that you want to be a noble child. You don't want any ignobility character in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to come inside and help you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So be sure that the Holy Spirit will help you. If you know you have any ignobility character in your life, just surrender it to the Lord and He will take charge. He will make you a noble child in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this session. Thank you for teaching us your word. Thank you for helping us to understand you. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you help us not to be ignoble in our lives, that we will be noble children, even unto you. Help us, oh Father, that we will not take loss into our hands, we will not take revenge. And also, Father, we pray that you will help us to manage, manage our, our, our desires, that we will be able not to be angry when we have been denied or we have been rejected. And Lord God Almighty, you will help us, O oh Father, to always be in your path and not to derail from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. You will keep us safe even till we come back next week to the glory of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's class and I hope you check in again for another lesson. But well, before we go, I want us to go with this song. I'm sure you will know it. And it will, you know, enlighten us, lighten up our spirit. I am a noble child. I am a noble child. Jesus made me a noble child. I am a noble child. Once again, I am a noble child. I am a noble child. Jesus made me a noble child. I am a noble child. So everywhere you go, just sing it that you are a noble child in the mighty name of Jesus. See you another time. Ciao, ciao.